Hello my friends, how are you doing? The twirl effect is super hot right now. So I want to show you how to do that in Affinity Photo with a lot of secret sauce. Let's get started. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. Of course, weekly challenge, live stream on Sunday, check all of that out. Let's start this show. So the first thing you need is a fun picture to play with. Lots of colors are good, lots of contrast are good and then I would say go to new and set up a canvas in the dimensions in the resolution you want it to be for example 16 by 9 or 1 by 1 and then simply go to your folder and drag the image onto the canvas. The benefit for that is you can now move around the image to any kind of position you desire for example let's put this a little bit up here like so and then I'm going to right click over here on that image and select duplicate. So I have a backup because I want to use the original image for some secret sauce at the end of this video. So right click on that and select rasterize and trim. This will make your image the same resolution and size as your canvas. So here comes the first secret sauce because the process is a bit different than in Photoshop. So I figured out a workaround for you. You want to go up here to layer and then create a new fill layer. After you've created that, set the type to solid, mostly it is solid already, and then set your fill color to medium gray. This is pretty important. When you have done this, right click on your fill layer and again select rasterize so this becomes a pixel layer this is pretty important for our next step because now we want to go up here to filters and we want to go to colors and on the end of that long menu you have procedural textures click on that and this will open up a window where you have another pop down menu for presets click on this and select checkered now with this you can see we get a nice checkerboard in the background down here it says square count in the field set up to taste. I go with 250 in my case, but you can experiment with other values. And what this gives us is a nice checkerboard in the background. Now that we have created that layer, select that layer, go here to your blend mode and then select multiply because this will then create a checkerboard inside of our image. To combine both of these layers, what we want to do is to right click on our checkerboard layer and select merge visible because this will merge everything you see on your canvas right now into a new layer. Now that we have done this, here is the first step to create our twirl effect. Go up here to filters and select blur and zoom blur. Now with this, I would suggest you do it like this. Go with 500 pixel or whatever is looking good to you and click apply. It looks like this and I know you can't see anything, so I will brighten it up for you. Let's go down here to our adjustment layers and select a levels layer. When you've done this, you see that you get this kind of histogram here and you have a black level and a white level. So move these sliders so that line that is visible up here in your histogram image is hitting the start of the mountains on both sides like this. This is an adjustment layer, which means it is non-destructive. You can also use the gamma to play around here to make it a little bit darker in the background. The next step, and this is what I want to suggest to you with the zoom, is to select that layer again that we have zoomed before and do the zoom again because you can see right now we have a little bit of steps in here that come from the checkerboard. If we go again to filters, repeat zoom blur, this will then get rid of this. You can see looks very smooth, very nice. Good. So from here on out, we are going to create the twirls. And of course, I have some secret sauce for you. You can go one of two ways. But the first step, the next step is going to be the same for both of them. Right click on the layer you have just zoom blurred and say 
duplicate down here. That's pretty important. So we have this now. And here is one way to go from here. You could go up here to liquefy and you can select the twirl effect in here. This has some downsides and some upsides that I will show you right now. I would turn off the mesh on the top right here because this is a little bit confusing. And then here for the size, the thing is you can only go as high as 4096. It doesn't go bigger than that. And you want to set the hardness to 100 or whatever looks good to you opacity to 100 or whatever feels good to you and then set up the speed again to whatever feels good to you. Now here is the thing. You need to click in the center of your image and when you hold down this is going to start to twirl but when you move this around this center can go in all kinds of directions and this might make it harder afterwards to line up your images. Also you might get some ugly effects like here so you have to look out for that. So let's cancel and show you the second way. Again, we are in the duplicate of our zoom blurred layer. Now we go up here to filter, distort and twirl. When we look at the settings, we have the angle of the twirl rotation. 100 works pretty good. And then you have the radius and you can enter here even bigger sizes. The thing is at a certain point, this is starting to break. It's starting to look strange. So let's go here to, for example, 5000. And you can see again, we get this kind of a breaking effect. But I have a workaround for you. Let's set it back to 1500 like this and apply that. And now what I can do is hold control and use your mouse wheel to zoom out. Then you use your move tool over here and select one of these handles. Hold down the control key. This is for Windows. Hold down the control key and drag this outwards because this will then keep it in the center and resize it without changing the ratio. You can see like this, I can make it as big as I want, get really rid of these kind of breaking effects or at least push them to the side. Let's stay like this, for example. Good. Now you can repeat these last steps if you want to, or what you can also do is right click again on that twirled layer and then duplicate that again so we have a duplicate and then simply grab this handle up here, hold control again and then move it upside down. And if you want to snap to 180 degrees, you want to also hold shift at the same time because you can see this is snapping to certain values. So now we have this upside down and here begins the fun when we blend these layers together. So for both of our twirled layers, what we want to do is to set the blend mode to lighten like this. And now let's zoom in here so we actually see a little bit more of the fun that is going on. And this already is starting to look pretty amazing. Now, again, open up your levels adjustment. Like I said, it's non-destructive. You can go in here and play around with these values to get some better result. You see here when you dive into the black values, first of all, you get some nice black values in the background and then the other colors start to pop a little bit more. So that can be a lot of fun to do it like this. And then also with the gamma, you can push into that. So this is one step to do that but here's an extra step to make it even more spicy and that is to create down here in the adjustments a curve layer for that and with that of course as you know when you make this s shape you pull down you push up over here you get a very nice contrast in that and you can push the values even harder if you want to. Again, this is completely up to taste. Be experimental. Have a lot of fun with that. Of course, we are not done. There's a lot more secret sauce to look into. So here is a fun thing you can do because right now it looks pretty cool. It has the colors of the original picture, but maybe you want to go a little bit more crazy and do more artistic stuff with that. So here's a trick. Select one of your twirl layers and create an HSL adjustment. This one, as you can see here. So so now with this, you can see this is a child layer right now. I can twist this over and I can, of course, then 
create different colors for that. And I can do the same thing with the other layer too. Look at that. Again, adjustment, HSL, it's a chart layer. Let's push this over here. You can see I can go any kind of way. Let's maybe, let's make this blue, a light blue. There we go. And doesn't this look amazing? Doesn't this look beautiful? You can play with the luminosity, you can play with the saturation, and we are still not done with our secret sauce. Because now I want to show you a little bit of a blur effect, and you can add to that a little bit of a glow. So on top of your curve layer, or onto the curve layer, right click and select merge visible again. This again will compress everything into a new pixel layer. And with that, set this to the blend mode soft light. You can see already intensifies, but now go to your effects tab, select Gaussian blur, turn it on and use the radius to create an interesting glow effect. This is something you can do. You don't have to do that. It's artistic and I personally think it looks beautiful. Now here's more secret sauce to go even crazier with this. Again, right click and then merge visible. So everything again becomes a new pixel layer. And now at this point, we can actually go back to liquify up here and try this. Go to your pinch tool and then in the center, push on that with our settings as before. And you will see that this will pump in really hard. And at a certain point, it will turn around to the other side like so and then create this outer ring, this outer twirl. So this can look really crazy. It can look really amazing as you can see like that. Or you can set the size smaller, set the speed to let's say 80% here, click on that. And you can see with that again, it does this effect where it turns around and now you get this beautiful kind of pearl in the middle here. Don't overdo it, but this already looks pretty nice. So you can do this. Looks pretty crazy if you want to have that. Uh, let's click on apply here just because why not? And here is the next cool thing you can do. Again, I save the image at the start. Let's go up here and push it to the top. So we have the original image here. And this of course works in this case better because we have these bright lines. So this is a pretty important important element for the next step. I will put these lines here a little bit off center. Let's put them a little bit higher than the rest so they are not completely centered. And then I'm going to go up here to filters, distort, and then I select mirror from this. Look at that, what I can do with this. We have these sliders. You can see the assistant has automatically turned this into a pixel layer now. And I want to go here with six mirrors in my case, like so. And then I want to set my input to something that looks cool. And you see, I set it off center. So I get these smaller rings over here. Ooh, wow. That looks pretty amazing. Let's use this. I'm already super happy. Let's click on apply here again, set the blend mode to lighten like so. Look at that. Wow. That's mind blowing. You have these effects here in the background that we don't want to have. Here is how to get rid of them. You want to go here to this little cogwheel, click on that. This will open up your blend ranges. And what you want to do with that is use the source layer blend ranges and click on this side and drag it down. And this will remove everything that is not bright in your image. So you can see I can move this over. And actually at this point, it is just keeping these brighter parts here that look pretty awesome. You can see there's a little bit of specs here in the background, but no problem for us because this is a pixel layer. So I can use my eraser brush over here and simply delete them from my image. You see over here and over there is a little bit of that. And just like that, we have created a super crazy twirl effect. Experiment with that. I'm looking forward to see your results and see you in my next tutorial. Bye. Bye.